Hey guys, and welcome to my quick UIM death and storage guide. I started playing UIM about two years ago on and off and have recently been solely on this account and grinding and learning a lot of different things and mechanics that go with the game mode that I thought I would share with you guys. The game mode can be overwhelming at times, but I hope after briefly going over the mechanics and with visuals that it will benefit anyone wanting or have made a UIM. But yeah, enough of that, let's uh, get into it. First things first, looting bag. The looting bag can store up to 28 tradable items that A, have to be put into the bag in the wilderness, and B, can only be taken out by death piling, which I will get into later. Retrieving the looting bag, you have a couple options. Most ultimates will either kill thugs in the Edgeville dungeon for their 1 in 15 chance of dropping it, or have points stored in the last man's standing shop where you can purchase a looting bag for one point. This last option is obviously a lot faster and safer, especially with the minigame teleport to Ferrox Enclave. The safest way to put your items into your looting bag too, is to aggro a skeleton near level one wilderness by the ditch and put in your items one or two at a time if you got the clicks. This ensures no one can attack you while putting items into your looting bag. It is level one wilderness, so it's already pretty unlikely, but better safe than sorry. Death piling now is a unique mechanic only to UIMs after the Death's Coffer and Gravestone update earlier this year. When a UIM dies, everything they have equipped in their inventory and in their looting bag will drop to the ground where you died. This includes untradeable items, so they will not disappear, unless it was a PvP or wilderness death. So please be careful. Your stuff on the ground will last exactly one hour from when you died. This is ample time to go get a looting bag and to reorganize your inventory accordingly to what you want to do next. The most common spot for UAMs to reorganize their inventory and looting bag is to attempt to pick the nettles by the yew trees in Edgeville without gloves on and repeatedly do so until you die. You can either run back to your pile, minigame teleport to Ferox Enclave or Soul Wars and take the portal back to Edgeville. Or, you know, pay a casual 5 mil to set your respawn to Edgeville. But I wouldn't bother. It should be noted too that manually dropping an item on the ground will let it last for two minutes before despawning and it shows to the public after one minute. Placing an item on a table though gets around this a bit, which will make the item last for 15 minutes before despawning. These items will show to the public too, so find a spot with a table that's secluded if you need to use this for whatever reason, like going to Entrana. Death banking is another mechanic UIMs utilize to manage inventory or keep items stored. Certain bosses and runescape have item storages for players who are bad and die to them while attempting to kill them. When you die, all of your items will be stored and have to be unlocked for a certain GP fee, depending upon the boss. But after paying the fee, you can pick and choose what items you want to take back. Being able to choose what you want back is the reason why it's so great for UIMs. The most common bosses that have storage are Zora, Vorkath, Grotus Guardians, and one of the easiest to use for UIM, in my very humble opinion, and right opinion, is Hispori. You do need 65 farming to be able to access it though, so get tight farming. There is one drawback to this death banking though. If you die in an unsafe area or minigame, everything in your death bank storage will be wiped and you will not get it back again. It's gone. Forever. Many have wiped their banks by accident with this, so I'll emphasize it again. If you die with items in the storage, you will lose it. Forever. So either be extra safe with PVMing or use it for when you want to do something safe, such as skilling. The costume room is another very useful storage mechanic for not only normal accounts, but UAM as well. I'll just briefly go over the lowest requirement units. The oak armor case requires 46 construction to build and can store various armor sets and gear, such as the fighter torso. The oak cape rack requires 54 construction and can hold capes such as the fire cape. It should be noted that you need at least the teak cape rack to store a level 99 cape, which is level 63 to build. Level 44 construction is the oak fancy dress box for random event gear, if you're into that. And level 42 construction can build the oak magic wardrobe, which you're able to store gear such as graceful and other skilling outfits. And lastly, the oak treasure chest at 48 construction lets you store clue items up to easy. Teak is needed for medium clue rewards and mahogany for everything else. Coin storage is also available for UAM if you need to save an inventory spot. Nightmare Zone is by far the easiest coffer to use for coin storage, but there is also the coin bag in your house as well as blast furnace. Stash units are also used for certain item storages in the game for ultimates, although I will say it's mainly the master stash units which require 88 construction to build, so it's a bit of a steep requirement. I won't go into detail about these, however I tend to build them as I go with the boost steps if I need to build and stash items away. For example, I currently use the master stash unit in the catacombs to store my arc light and ammo to the damned. Uh, danged. Uh, crap. Alright, that about wraps up my quick guide. If you found it useful, please leave a like, subscribe if you want more UAM content, as I do have a progress series going on, and leave a comment down below if you know any other helpful tips for anybody. Uh, I'm just hoping to, for anybody that's, you know, starting out into the game mode and just need a little uh, quick video for this, so yeah, thanks again guys, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the near future.